County Wellness Center here in Pictou County, Nova Scotia. My name is Michael Petter. This is Petter Sports and Streaming through Atlantic Hockey Online, a division of AO Live. And this afternoon, we have for you the last game prior to the Christmas break for these two teams in the Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League. It is the visiting Sydney Mitsubishi Rush against the hometown Weeks Majors. Before we go any further, we must take a moment to once again acknowledge that the Pictou County Wellness Center, the entire community of Pictou County, and the entire region covered, <coughs> excuse me, covered by the Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League, which includes all of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island, all lie within the ancestral and unceded territory of Mi'kma'ki. And as we look at this matchup, we see two teams that both are in the bottom half of the standings in the Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League coming into the Christmas break. Both of these teams about two-thirds of the way through their schedule. And both of these teams looking to try and improve their standing prior to the start of the playoffs, which will be occurring starting in mid-February. For the week's majors, they have been improving after a slow start to the season. Their record now sits at 7 14 and 2 overall after as i said a slow start to the year you look at their last five games they're three and two in their last five games still having a little bit of struggle on the offensive side of the puck but that has improved as i said over the last few games starting to put up a little bit more offense for the sydney mitsubishi rush they sit right now in last place Two points back of the Weeks, though. The Weeks majors sit in sixth place. The Sydney Mitsubishi Rush in eighth place with a record of 6, 17, and 2, good for 14 points on the season. Their struggles have mostly been on the defensive side of the puck, unfortunately for them, as they've given up 136 goals in 25 games, which works out to an average of just a little bit under 5.5 goals per game so far this season and that does not reflect the uh, quality of goaltending that they have in Manny Strong and Jonathan Coombs. We talked about it a lot during yesterday's broadcast how this team has just been at times um, snake bit. A lot of uh, bad luck has gone their way. Bounces just not working for them so far this season. It has been a struggle but hoping that they can turn things around as they prepare to host the National U18 Club Championships for Hockey Canada coming up in the spring, uh, late April to be specific. So the Rush know that they have that spot booked. They also know that they will be in the playoffs in the Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League as all eight teams will make it to the playoffs. But if they do finish in eighth place, that means, of course, they would have to take on the number one seed, whomever that ends up being, which right now is very much a two-horse race between Steel Subaru, who come in with a record of 20 and 3 into today, the Halifax McDonald's 20 and 2. Those two teams tied at 40 points, 15 points clear of third place Valley in the Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League. So it really is a two-horse race for that number one seed in the Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League when it comes to playoff positioning for February. And of course, for Steel Subaru, they will be at Atlantics regardless of what happens in the playoffs this year. They will be the host team for the Atlantic Championships coming up at the beginning of April. And of course, the winner of Atlantics will then head up to, to uh, the beautiful facility up in Sydney that the Rush play out of for that championship tournament. Taking a closer look at the matchup in today's game, this is the fifth of six meetings between these two teams. Right now, the season series is tied at two wins apiece. The Rush winning the first two meetings back in early October by scores of 3-1 to one and 5-4. to four. Then the Weeks came back with a 7-4 victory later in the month of October. And then yesterday, the Weeks with the 5-0 win over Sydney Mitsubishi Rush to even up the series season series. They'll play today, and then they will meet again one more time coming up a little bit later on in uh, 
this month. It'll be Jan- or December 30th, to be precise, up at the Member 2 Sports and Wellness Center when they will have their final regular season meeting between the two teams. Jonathan Coombs and Colby Brown get the start in today's game. Brown played in yesterday's game as well. Coombs gets the start today after Manny Strong played yesterday. Strong did not play badly. Yes, the game ended in a 5-0 scoreline, but that is not a reflection on Manny Strong. He is, as we've said, a very good goaltender. You look at the five goals that he gave up. A couple of them were plays where he made the initial save and then the rebound was potted in. There were a couple that were uh, just really good deflections that not many people were going to be able to stop. And there was one that was a bad turnover just inside the blue line in his own zone. The player who uh, was able to make that steal, Ben Pearl, coming in all alone on a breakaway and able, able to meet Manny Strong on that one. So, again, very much not a situation where you can look at it and point the finger at Manny Strong in any uh, way, shape, or... <coughs> excuse me, any way, shape, or form. But Jonathan Coombs does get the start tonight, or this afternoon, rather, uh, after giving the start yesterday to Manny Strong. Looking at Coombs, Coombs, his record 1-10 and so far on the season, a 6.18 goals against average and 862 save percentage. For the weeks, we mentioned that Colby Brown gets his second straight start of this weekend. Colby Olton will be, or Caleb Olton, excuse me, will be watching Uh, for the second straight day. And when you look at Colby Brown, his record 4-9 and on the year, but he is the hot hand after getting the shutout yesterday. A 3.50 goals against average and an 8.73 save percentage. When you look at the lineups for today's game, uh, very, or pretty much exactly the same as yesterday. No changes for either team that I can see at first glance here just doing a quick rundown to make sure that that is indeed the case and that is indeed the case so both of these teams with the lineups looking the same as they did in yesterday's game of course one of the big stories for the Sydney Mitsubishi Rush Rory Pilling who may or may not be returning to the lineup soon. Still waiting to hear on what will be happening with him. Uh, Possibly coming back into the the team. It's just a matter of if and when that does occur. And still showing up when you look at the Sydney Mitsubishi Rush roster. He still appears on the list of players on the roster, but uh, when you look at the team stats, he, uh, where is he here? Uh, Where did he go? Hang on. Has yet to appear in a game, I do believe. Just hang on. Yes, no, uh, no actual games for Pilling with the Rush this season, but he does show up on their roster on the league website. It's just a matter of if they are going to be able to have him available uh, for games coming up this season. For the weeks, as mentioned, no changes from yesterday's lineup. And as well, for the rush, no changes from yesterday's lineup. So everything will look the same. The one change, as we mentioned, is that uh, it is Jonathan Coombs getting the start instead of uh, Manny Strong. Other than that, everything is the same as it was yesterday. There are a couple of other games in the Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League today. Taking a look, we see that also playing today, the Valley Wildcats are at the Cole Harbor Wolfpack, and the Cape Breton West Islanders are 
visiting Steel Subaru, and we will keep you up to date on those games as the day goes on. The Wildcats and the Wolfpack right now are well in progress. They are into the second period of that game. In fact, late in the second period of that game, and the Valley Wildcats lead the Wolfpack 3-2, to two, and that one quite the... Uh, Quite the battle there as you've got the teams who sit third and fourth currently in the Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League. So that one, quite the battle. And then as we mentioned a little later on today, uh, actually their game will get going about 15 minutes after ours. will be Cape Breton West Islanders taking on Steel Subaru. Quick rundown of what happened yesterday. Other than the 5-0 win for the week's majors, it was a 4-3 victory in overtime for the Halifax McDonald's over Cole Harbour. It was a 6-5 win for the UPS Store South Shore Mustangs over the Valley Wildcats. And another overtime game saw Dartmouth Steel Subaru defeat the Cape Breton West Islanders by a score of 4-3. There you see the Sydney Mitsubishi Rush in their gold jerseys with the maroon and white trim. The maroon numbers on the back. They will defend the net to your broadcast left for the first and third period. And as we pan over to the broadcast right, you'll see the Weeks are in their blacks today. Actually, the Weeks do have one change to the roster. I missed it earlier, and I apologize for that. Uh, just got to do a quick check here of see Jaden Duncan in the lineup as an AP call-up, making his first appearance with the Weeks. Uh, trying to look and see who is out of the lineup. We'll get you more details on that after pregame introductions. And we see now that uh, Jaden Duncan draws into the lineup with Callum Green out. And Duncan, a defenseman. So the Weeks running with 7D and 11 forwards today. Taking a look at the starters in front of Jonathan Combs for the Dartmouth, or for uh, City Mitsubishi Rush. It's going to be Murphy on the back end with Cohen Tanner. And the starting forward line of Brody Dawson, Tyler Seymour, and Caden Robitaille. For the weeks, <clears throat> Jaden Duncan gets the start on the back end along with Josh Ingram and the starting forward unit, Madison Vora and Sutherland as we are, er, Madison Vora and Jordan, my apologies, as we are underway here at the Pictou County Wellness Center. Duncan with his first touch of the puck takes a shot from the point. It gets blocked before getting even close to the net. Now Vora will play the puck off the board, sends it around behind the net. Murphy over to it, plays it ahead. Robitaille uses the wall to get the puck out past Duncan. Going back to pick up is Ingram. Ingram tries to change directions to get away from Dawson. Has to reverse field again. 
Now the puck played ahead to Vora. He'll get it out to center. That pass just a little bit out of the reach of Jordan, but it goes right by Murphy. A little too far from Murphy, says the Lions person, so we're going to have an icing call against the Weeks with just 42 seconds gone here in the first period. Faceoff will come back down into the Weeks major zone. O'Neill to take the draw against Sam Madison. As... O'Neill wins it back to the line. Noah Tanner with the shot. That goes just up over the crossbar into the end glass. Puck is picked up in the corner by Madison. He'll take it behind the net. Change directions. Now plays it forward for Ingram. Ingram flips, flips it ahead to Vora. Vora doesn't get a stick on it. McKinnon sends it back into the weak zone. Ingram on it again. He'll take it back behind the net, being chased down by O'Neill. The captain, who celebrated a birthday yesterday for the, weeks, or for the uh, rush. Puck comes to the line. McKinnon gets it back deep. Marshall going in after it. He's not able to get on the puck. It goes around to the far side. O'Neill is there. He meets with his counterpart who wears seven, being uh, Ingram. Frazier also in there. Now here's Sam Madison with the puck. As the Weeks have one player who's not part of the starting five who had gotten off of the ice. Now they get the other four players changed. A minute and a half into the game. Here comes Noah Tanner picking up speed as he comes through center. Noah Tanner still with the puck. Tries a backhand shot, and that is sent just a little bit wide beyond Colby Brown. Fitzgerald holds the puck, holds the puck in at the line. Now Campbell takes a hit as he gets the puck out to center ice. It's gathered up by Noah Tanner. He'll play it ahead. That's intercepted by O'Coin. O'Coin plays it forward. Fitzgerald picks that up for the rush and now gets the pass forward to Brady Matheson. Matheson deflects it down into the weak zone. Deep Manis back to get it. Tries to make a pass. That's intercepted by Fitzgerald. He gets a shot off, and Colby Brown makes the save. Puck comes to the line. McIsaac sends it back down the boards. Picked up by Sears. Kieran Sears, who wears the C today. Ben Manis wearing the C when the Weeks wear their white jerseys. In the black jerseys, it's number 16, Kieran Sears, who has that C on his chest. As the two, the two skaters out of the three returning players from last year's Atlantic Championship team both wearing letters. Here's Stoddart getting the puck ahead for Sutherland. He redirects and ends up putting it just wide beyond Jonathan Coombs. Puck played back around into the near side corner. Poked forward there by Murphy, but it's knocked down right away by Vora. Vora ends up with it into the corner. Plays it into the front of the net. It goes all the way to the far wall. Over to get it is Merriweather. He sends it back down into the corner for Vora. Vora returns it right away to Merriweather. Out front, there's a chance for Sears. And Coombs get a, gets a piece of that one. Now the, another chance, that pass... Out front gets deflected, comes all the way to the line. Vora plays it down low. It gets beyond Sears, comes all the way into the near side corner. Murphy will play it up the wall. Matheson trying to clear the zone. He can't as Stoddart knocks that down. Sutherland there as well. Stoddart now gets it over to Ingram. Ingram backs up, top of the faceoff circle, comes back to the middle, takes a shot. And Coombs makes the save and hangs on with 3.24 gone here in the first period. And we get another stoppage. With Coombs smothering the puck. Just our second stoppage in play, I do believe. The first one. And we're going to get a penalty here. Matheson going off for hooking. And we can tell you that the Weeks Majors go on to the power play. And the power play has been one of their big strengths this season. They lead the league in power play efficiency at 82 or at 23.8%. Uh, scoring on their power plays and they are going up against a penalty kill that has struggled this season last in the league 72.7 percent efficiency on their penalty kills so far and so this a big chance for the weeks to strike first in this one there's a pass across tried to connect with madison not able to second chance third chance coombs made the second save the third save was made by the iron as the Weeks get a couple of great opportunities there. Jonathan Coombs making a couple of nice saves, but also getting some help from the iron. Now here's Merriweather with the puck. 113 left to go in the power play. Played down to Madison. Back up to the top of the zone, Merriweather. Across for Ingram, one-timer, but he fans on it, and the puck goes harmlessly into the corner. Picked up there by Sears. Back to Ingram. Ingram. Skates it back up to the top of the zone. He'll switch places with Merriweather. Play it down to Madison. Madison gives it right back to Ingram. Another shot. That goes wide. Comes off the end boards. Gathered in by Noah Tanner, but he's not able to clear. Is Ingram able to stop the puck before it exits the zone? 
Played across to the far side, Merriweather. Right back to Ingram again. Ingram can't take the pass cleanly, and the Weeks will have to come out and touch up with 40 seconds left on the man advantage. Rush try to get a couple of players changed, but that gives the Weeks a chance to come in with an odd man rush. Madison ends up with the puck, takes it down into the corner. The Rush are able to reestablish their uh, defensive uh, penalty kill shape. And the shot taken from the line, and Coombs makes the save and hangs on. 26 seconds left in the power play. 15.02 remaining here in period number one. Great chances early in that power play for the Weeks. And as we mentioned, a couple of nice stops by Jonathan Coombs. And then he got a little bit of help from the post. Sometimes you need that help. As the rush get the puck down the length of the ice. Brown out of his net, plays it to Manis. Ben Manis takes it out from behind the net. Now he'll start carrying it ahead. Taking a look, he'll continue to carry. Comes in across the blue line, now plays it over to Jordan at the right wing wall. Five seconds left in the power play. Jar Jordan tries to go cross ice with that pass. It gets knocked down. Jordan back on it. Now it comes back to the wall. Played back to the line. Manis had to be quick on it. As coming out of the penalty box there was Matheson. Now a lead pass for Matheson. Realized he couldn't get a shot away, so stopped and turned. Gets the puck across, and the redirect ends up going just wide off the stick of, I believe, that was Robitaille. Now Robitaille behind the net. Has a man in there with him. Manis ends up getting his stick into the back of Matheson, and that's going to be a penalty. And they're going to call it cross-checking. Ben Manis trying to argue, but uh, from up here, it looked pretty clear that Manis got that stick uh, parallel to the ice. And when that happens and it goes across the kidney area of the opposing player, it's going to get called. So a cross-checking call against Ben Manis at the 547 mark. And for the rush, another or one of the areas that's been strong for them this season, similar to with the Weeks, has been their power play, 20.8%. Power play efficiency, that's third best in the league, going up against the fourth best penalty kill as the weeks have been pretty good on both sides of the special teams. 82.4% penalty kill efficiency for the week's majors, that's fourth best. So right near the middle of the pack in the Nova Scotia under 18 major hockey league. Here's a chance shorthanded, Jordan going in after the puck, but he and Seymour will collide. Seymour will end up with the puck. Lead pass intended for McDonald. Partially broken up by Merriweather, but now O'Neill following up on the play. O'Neill down towards the corner working against uh, McKenzie. And the Weeks are able to get possession and send it down the length of the ice. 107 left to go in the power play. Noah Tanner being chased down by Sears. Gets the puck to Dawson. Dawson carries ahead, gives to McDonald. McDonald trying to get around O'Coin, pushes the puck to the end board. Sears gets to it first, and then Jackson Stoddart will launch it down the ice with 46 seconds left to go in the rush power play. Back to gather it in is Cohen McIsaac. McIsaac gets the pass ahead to Robitaille. Robitaille gives to Gould. Gould gets it towards the net. Brown will knock it away towards the corner. Stoddart gets tied up there. Under 30 seconds left to go in the power play. Puck comes to the line. McIsaac plays it back down the wall to Robitaille. Robitaille's pass for Dawson forces him to come out to neutralize so the rush have to touch up Dawson meanwhile being chased back by Sears able to find McIsaac, McIsaac now will carry it through the neutral zone in across the blue line coming down the right wing wall, stops at the half boards, plays it back to the line for Dawson Dawson goes far side with it to Robitaille Robitaille right back to Dawson again Dawson works it down towards the right wing corner, he'll take it behind the net over to the left wing corner we're back to 5 on 5, Dawson still with the puck now plays it back to Robitaille, Robitaille taking a look Gets the pass down. Centering pass broken up by Sears. Manis ends up with the puck, and he'll clear it out down the ice. Not hard enough for an icing, and the Weeks will get a fresh five-man unit out there after finishing off the penalty kill. Puck comes to neutral ice. Gathered up there by Billard. Billard plays it back to Cohen Tanner. He plays it ahead. It comes right back to him again. Now Tanner gets the pass forward for Ford. Ford brings it in across the blue line. Has the puck knocked down there by Sheehan. Sheehan will get it out down the length of the ice. Icing is indicated and will be called with 8.27 gone here in the first period. We mentioned these teams will meet one more time at the Member 2 Sports and Wellness Center 
And that'll be on December 30th. As this league normally takes a break for the uh, for the holiday breaks, but uh, not the case entirely. Here's Croft after a block shot, trying to chase the puck down, but Coombs out of his net to play it. Now Pearl with a shot, finds the far post and scores. As Jonathan Coombs did get back to his crease, but did not get himself fully square to the middle of the net. Ben Pearl recognizes it, finds the room on the far side, and Ben Pearl gets the goal to put the Weeks on the board first. It's 1-0. Pearl with his fifth goal and eighth point of the season gives the Weeks the lead. Here as we near the midway point of the first period. Croft with the assist after he forced Coombs to come out and play that puck. Croft did get a piece of it. It ended up going to Pearl. And as Coombs got back to his net, didn't realize that he wasn't quite centered in his net with respect to where Pearl was. Pearl saw that empty space far side and was able to score the goal. Now there's a shot. Save, rebound. Puck is still loose. Seymour finds it. He doesn't get it out. Sears now with a shot. And that steered away as well as the Weeks get good pressure here, trying to extend on this one nothing lead that they have as we near the midway point of the first period. Ingram sends it behind the net to Sears. Sears tries to center it for Jordan. That goes off of Robitaille. Now the puck goes in behind the net. Noah Tanner couldn't get a stick on it. Jordan has it knocked off his stick by Robitaille, but it goes right back to Sheehan. Sheehan blocks the clearing attempt. Now Madison... Sends it forward. Seymour able to find it and bring it out to center. Seymour has the puck knocked off his stick by Campbell. And Campbell will reverse field up the other way up to Frazier. Ethan Frazier has Campbell heading to the net. Frazier with a sharp angle shot and the save made by Coombs. Puck goes to the corner. Picked up there by McIsaac. Cohen McIsaac will carry it up the left wing side. Takes a hit as he dumps the puck in. Did not gain the red line. And so that's going to be an icing call against the rush with 10-20 gone here in the first period. And the Weeks, with Ben Pearl's fifth goal and eighth point of the season, out in front, one nothing. Duncan with a shot. That gets blocked. Marshall gets the puck out across the blue line. McKenzie sends it back in. Cohen Tanner plays it across to McIsaac. McIsaac taking a look, tries to make a pass. That's knocked down by McKenzie. And Frazier gets the puck back deep into the zone. Tanner after it, plays it around to the far side. McIsaac and Frazier both go after it, but it's chopped up to Billard. Billard able to find Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald now carries in across the blue line, plays it across. Can't find Marshall as the puck just gets beyond him. And now the week's coming back the other way. Here's Sears with it. Sears tried to feed it to Frazier, but that gets too far in front of him. And Jonathan Coombs covers up and hangs on for a faceoff. 8.56 left to go in the first period. We talk about the Sydney Mitsubishi Rush goaltending and how they are better than their numbers show. There are very few goaltenders who can come out and play a puck like Coombs had to do because if he didn't, Croft was going to get that puck and Croft was going to have a chance to score. So Coombs did the only thing he could do, which was come out, play the puck. Unfortunately for him, he had to then race back to his crease. And very few goaltenders can watch the puck back up to their crease from the faceoff dot and find the exact center of where they need to be to cut off an angle. And he wasn't far off. Let's be clear, if Jonathan Coombs is maybe... 10 inches or a foot not even 10 inches 6 to 8 inches further to his left he makes that save a very close opportunity now here's Matheson coming the other way he gets a shot and the puck nearly fooled Colby Brown as I think he, he was expecting it to come in with a little bit more speed it got partially blocked and that nearly fooled Brown as the 5 hole came open but he was able to get it closed up again 
and make the save, stop the puck, and get a face off with 8.20 left to go here in period number one. By the way, we do like to try and be a bit interactive with our broadcast here on Petter Sports and Streaming. You can reach us one of two ways. You can reach us through that uh, app that used to be known as Twitter. Ah, I just got a message as to why Rory Pilling hasn't been in anybody's lineup this season. There's Seymour with a shot. Thank you, Brent DeVoe, for letting me know. It, uh, he's dealing with a lower body injury, a broken leg, which uh, that is a nasty, nasty one to try and deal with. And uh, obviously we wish Rory Pelling a speedy recovery. Uh, as soon as you know that as soon as he's going to be able to, he will be back in the lineup, whether it's for the Eagles, whether it's for the Rush, whomever he ends up being with. And as I mentioned, he is still listed on, or he is listed on the Rush roster right now on the league website. So you know that as soon as he's available, the likelihood is he will be in the Rush lineup. It's just a question of how much longer that is going to be. Here's Croft with the puck. Croft, another player who dealt with an injury that happened during camp. He didn't play for the first, uh, I think it was four or five weeks of the regular season. Here's Pearl with the puck, getting it to Ingram. Ingram with a shot. That's partially blocked. Ingram gets it back again. Takes it down into the corner, trying to get away from the pressure of Dawson. Gets the puck to the front of the net, but McIsaac there, able to pick it up. Now a backhand shot by Croft, save made. The puck cleared away from the front of the net. Madison steps in, plays it back to the line. Ingram not able to hold it onside, and we're going to get an offside call with 6.49 left to go. So I mentioned you can reach us through that uh, app known as X. Uh, my handle is at Petter, P-E-T-T-E-R, as in my last name, Petter, P-C underscore sports. That's P-E-T-T-E-R, P-C underscore sports. You can also reach us through Facebook. Go to Facebook.com and then search for Petter Sports and Streaming. The and is an ampersand, and you can send us a message through uh, that media as well. As you can reach us through either of those. Now here's Marshall with the puck, getting it across to the far side, but Merriweather able to break up the pass that was intended for Robitaille. Big play there by Matt Merriweather to deny that scoring opportunity. 6-10 left to go here, first period. one nothing for the Weeks. Coming out with the puck, Madison, he'll get it ahead to Sutherland. Sutherland tried to feed it through for Jordan. That pass was knocked down by Murphy. Now Jordan gets it down in the corner, trying to get away from Murphy. Makes a nice move there. Luke gets the puck to Sutherland, and right back to Murph, or right back to uh, Jordan. And another big save made by Jonathan Coombs. And he will hang on for a faceoff with just under six minutes left to go here in period number one. And we are going to get another penalty. It's going to be Logan O'Neill going off. Or <laughs> Keegan O'Neill. Logan O'Neill is a crusher. Keegan O'Neill <laughs> is uh, a member of the Mitsubishi Rush. And O'Neill going off for roughing with 5.54 left to go in the first period. Logan O'Neill, one of several former. Uh, members of the City Mitsubishi Rush who play for the Weeks Crushers in the Junior A uh, Hockey League. We mentioned a bunch of them yesterday, one that we missed, and I do want to apologize to Preston Pattengale. I knew I was missing at least one, and I think it might have been just, just the one as it turned out. There's a shot for Jordan. He scores! Chris Jordan on the power play puts the Weeks up 2 to nothing, And for Jordan... That is goal number 12. He leads the team in goals. That's his sixth power play goal. Takes him out of a tie for the team lead in power play goals. And that is his 17th point, which is third on the team in points behind Ryan Vora and Rylan Sutherland. Chris Jordan with the power play goal at 15-20, or at 14-28, excuse me, to put his team up by a 2-0 margin. Croft gets his second assist of the game. Ryan O'Coin also with an assist. So once again, that goal is Chris Jordan, his 12th goal, 17th point of the season, 6th power play goal of the year, 
assisted by Brady Croft and Ryan O'Coin at 14-28 on the power play, making the score 2-0 for the Weeks. And if you look at the game yesterday and add it to the game today, that's 7-0 the Weeks have outscored the rush so far this weekend. Weeks with possession in their own zone. Ingram will play it ahead for Vora. Vora coming in across the left wing side of the blue line. Sends the puck towards the net. Sutherland there for a deflection. But Jonathan Coombs in great position to make the save and hang on for a faceoff. 439 remaining in the first period. You look at the season overall. Coming into today's game with the four previous meetings, we mentioned the fact that they are the teams are 2-2 two and two against each other. Coming into today's game, the Weeks had scored 17 goals in those four games. The Rush had scored 12 goals in those four games. So throw these two goals on. It's now 19-12 to 12 over the four games and almost a period favoring the Weeks. But the last seven consecutive goals... All four of the weeks this weekend. Here's Tyler Seymour seeing what he can do to try and break that streak. And if we go back to the game on October 21st, which was the last meeting prior to yesterday, and we'll take a look at that here. Uh, da, 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 da. It'll take us a fi- uh, while to find it. The last three goals of that game were scored by the Weeks so in this matchup of these two teams the Weeks have now scored 10 consecutive goals against Sydney there's an attempted pass by McDonald but it was broken up as he couldn't get much on it Tanner sends the puck back to the Weeks blue line now Dawson has it at his own blue line trying to get away from the pressure of Cream Dawson Can't get by Pearl. Pearl brings the puck back in across the line. Pearl gives to Croft. Croft with a shot, looking to go up high, but ends up missing the net. Now Stoddard holds it in at the line. His attempt to get the puck deep is off of Marshall. Now Marshall gets the puck back, finds Dawson, but Dawson had to take that pass on his backhand and ended up losing control of the puck. Cohen Tanner plays it in neutral ice, gets it ahead to Ford. Ford comes across the blue line, gets... Lost the puck to Merriweather, but was able to get it back. Now there's a chance, and what a save by Colby Brown. After the whistle, Merriweather knocked down Ford, but I'm still um, out of words after that save by Colby Brown. Uh, Brilliant, doesn't quite seem to cover it. A fantastic, amazing Phenomenal save by the week's majors goaltender. (coughs) Dawson and Madison to take the draw. Puck ends up heading towards the corner. Marshall gets to it there. He gives it to Ford. Marshall back on it. Battling there with Madison. Ford comes in. He'll pick up the puck. Try to get it to the front of the net. He'll take it behind the net instead when he saw he didn't have a passing lane. Gets taken down. Right back up again. Now they scrum along the far side wall. Madison pokes it ahead, but it's held in by Cohen Tanner. He fires a shot, and the save made by Colby Brown, and he'll hang on for another faceoff. 2.17 left to go in the first period. We talked about it yesterday. Former NHL goaltender Joey McDonald, the goaltending coach on this team, and the work that he has done with Colby Brown and Caleb Walton has just been fantastic this year. McDonald, of course, played for... Uh, Detroit, Calgary, Montreal, and I want to say there was one other. Another great save by Brown. The Islanders. I knew I was missing one. Joey McDonald. Uh, some va- some great NHL experience, and he is bringing that experience and knowledge to this week's goaltending staff. Now here comes Matheson. He gets stood up by O'Coin. Puck is all the way back down to the Sydney blue line. Robitaille will play it over to Murphy. Murphy tries to get a pass across. That's knocked down by Vora, who deflects it down into the corner. McIsaac 
Fires it around the wall. Sears holds it in at the line momentarily, but now here comes O'Neal. Keegan O'Neal trying to work against Manis. O'Neal makes a back pass for Matheson. It's knocked away from him, and now Vora gets the puck, and he plays it across to Sutherland. Sutherland coming in with 1.16 left to go in the first period. Vora now loses the puck to Robitaille. Robitaille flips it ahead, tried to get it to Fitzgerald, but Ingram gets in the passing lane there, and Ingram will bring it back into the rush zone, sends the puck to the end boards. Campbell going in after it, working there against Noah Fitz, or Noah uh, Tanner. As we're now into the final minute of the period, Seymour pokes the puck ahead. It'll be picked up by Fitzgerald on the right wing wall. Fitzgerald tries to center it. That pass is deflected by Merriweather, and that will allow... McKenzie to come the other way. He's got Merriweather jumping up with him. McKenzie trying to head towards the net. He'll take it behind the net instead. Plays it back to the line for Ingram. Ingram backs up, fires a shot. It goes off of Billard and into the end boards. Now Noah Tanner, he takes a bump from Frazier. Tanner able to reverse field, gets the puck up to Seymour, and Seymour will play it to Fitzgerald as they come out to center with 25 seconds left. Fitzgerald drops off to Seymour. Seymour with a shot. That's deflected up into the glass. Puck comes up the wall. Cohen Tanner gets to it there. He's met by McKenzie, and that allows Madison to get on the puck and bring it back out with 13 seconds left. Madison gets around Murphy. Madison with a backhand shot. Puts it off the outside of the net. Madison gets tied up in the corner. Puck is taken by Noah or Cohen Tanner. He gets it to the line and out, and that will do it for the first period. Weeks out, shoot the rush 10-7 in that opening frame. But more importantly... They get the only two goals on the board. Ben Pearl with his fifth. Chris Jordan with his 11th on the power play. And after 20 minutes of play, it is weeks two, rush zero. We'll take a break, come back, get you ready for the second period. In just a few minutes, you are watching Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League action here on Petter Sports and Streaming through Atlantic Hockey Online, a division of AO Live.
Welcome back. As we get ready for the start of the second period, we'll start with a quick look at the out-of-town scoreboard. The Valley Wildcats have defeated the Coal Harbor Wolfpack by a score of 4-2. to two. That game has gone final down in Coal Harbor. One other game on the schedule for today. And as we look, that game is in progress. And in the first period, Cape Breton West Islanders and Steel Subaru still looking for the first goal of the game in that one. Meanwhile, here we have Ben Pearl with his fifth of the season. And we have Chris Jordan with his 11th to give the week's majors the 2-0 lead after the opening 20 minutes here at the Pictou County Wellness Center. And as we mentioned, that's 10 straight goals for the week's majors against Sydney Mitsubishi Rush if you take it all the way back to October 21st. And at the time, it was 4-4 in that game between the week's and the rush. The rush had won the first two meetings of the season. It was the third time these teams were playing against each other. The score was 4-4 into the third period, and the Weeks scored to make it 5-4, then 6-4, then 7-4. That was October 21st. Then yesterday, the Weeks win by a score of 5 to nothing. So that's eight straight goals. Throw in two more here this afternoon, and 10 consecutive goals in this head-to-head -head matchup between these two teams. The rush are going to have to find a way to stem the flow that the Weeks have been able to put up over this last game and a half almost now. And for the start of the second period, it's going to be Cohen Tanner and Cole Murphy on the back end to try and reverse this tide. Robitaille O'Neill and Seymour up front for the Weeks. <laughs> the Weeks are starting with Madison, Vora, and Jordan up front. Ingram on the back end with the affiliated player, Jaden Duncan, who again drew into the lineup with Callum Green out today. As the second period gets going, Madison wins the draw, gets possession himself and carries it quickly into the rush zone. Takes it all the way down into the left wing corner. Throws it towards the front of the net. It ends up going through the feet of Cohen Tanner and all the way down the length of the ice. Brown out of his net. Plays it there. Gives it to Duncan. Duncan will play it around to the far side for Ingram. Ingram ahead to Vora. Vora sets it up for Madison. Madison, that pass. Jordan does get a piece of it to negate an icing, but the puck does end up going all the way down deep into the rush zone. Sydney able to get it to the line. Now they come out with it as Seymour gets the puck across to Robitaille. Robitaille steps in, shot, save, rebound. And before O'Neill could get his stick on the rebound, Colby Brown able to find the puck, cover it up, and hang on for a faceoff. 40 seconds into this second period. Good chance there for the City Mitsubishi rush. And we mentioned uh, at the end of the first period, the shots on goal read 10-7 for the weeks as Brown... Looks like he's a little shaken up after that play. Taking a second to get his head back on straight. Now he's ready to go. Bouncing puck at the side of the net. Madison plays it up the wall. Can't clear the zone. It's gathered in by Dawson. He gets taken into the wall by Campbell. I was talking about the shots on goal being 10-7. It felt to me... And talking to Stephen McPhee, my cameraman as well, felt to both of us that uh, Jonathan Coombs deserved credit for a few more saves than that as it seemed like he faced maybe somewhere around 16, 15, 16, maybe 17 shots. And to be fair to those guys down in the booth, it's sometimes hard to tell. There's a shot and a save made by Brown. Sometimes it's hard to tell if a shot's going to be on target or it's hard to tell if a shot gets all the way through to the goaltender or in a scramble if there are two shots or three or four. So uh, it's not an easy job down there. You're not at the greatest angle to see as far as how many shots are taken. And it's not like the NHL where, you know, a shot on goal is verifiable by 14 different camera angles and, you know, you can computerize the trajectory of whether the puck was going to go wide or whether it was going to be on net and all of those sorts of things. 
Here it's the work of a couple of guys with not the greatest angle to look at as the puck rolls in onto uh, Brown again. And that's not just at this rink. That's at, uh, you know, every rink across the globe. If you're talking about games that are not at the professional level, maybe Major Junior is able to do it too, but if you're talking about the games not at the absolute highest of levels, uh, the goaltender stats are going to be not 100% accurate, but they're going to be as good as you can get from the volunteer base that is working. And I have a ton of respect for Bill and Bill down there in the penalty box. They do a great job down there. Just sometimes they can't quite see how many shots a goaltender has actually faced. Here's Murphy with the puck. As all of the shots so far in this second period have come from the sticks of rush players. Here's Cream now. He'll get it down into the Sydney zone. McIsaac picks it up, plays it around the boards, but it's knocked down by Croft. Croft tries to make a pass back to his defense. That's broken up by Gould, and now here comes the rush. Pass intended for Gould as he was heading towards the net. Goes off the skate of Merriweather. Merriweather able to pick up the puck off the end boards. Plays it off the glass. Cohen Tanner gloves it down. Now Merriweather back on it. He'll play it back to Ingram. Ingram takes a look. Works his way ahead. Pokes the puck out. Gould there to bring it right back into the weak zone as Sydney off to a great start here in this period. We played two minutes and 50 seconds and just about all of the play has been in the zone to our left which is the one being defended by the Weeks. Now here's Pearl with the puck. He'll play it, bring it ahead, finally get it deep into the Sydney zone. <laughs> Noah Tanner fires it around the wall, intended for Marshall, but Ingram able to step up and intercept that one. Madison trying to get the puck back deep. Noah Tanner will get it there. He'll play it around to Cohen Tanner on the near side. Tanner sends the backhander up the wall. McDonald not able to get it before McKenzie got on the puck. He goes up over the net into the far corner. Noah Tanner gives it back to Cohen Tanner behind the net. His pass intended for McDonald, broken up once again by Seth McKenzie. Now a centering pass intended for Madison. That's broken up, and out comes Marshall. Marshall trying to get a step on Ingram. Marshall cutting to the outside, but Ingram able to stay right with him, stride for stride. Puck goes all the way to the end board. Centering pass broken up by McKenzie. McKenzie gets it ahead to Jordan. Jordan able to play it out to center. Noah Tanner sends it back into the weak zone, and now here's Ingram. He'll play it ahead. McKenzie deflects it the rest of the way down the ice. The Weeks will get a couple of players changed as Noah Tanner gets it ahead to Robitaille. Robitaille finds O'Neill. Here comes Keegan O'Neill in across the blue line. O'Neill cutting out to the left, or to the right rather. She throws a sharp angle shot on target. Save made by Brown. Puck to the line. McKinnon with a shot. That gets blocked by Sheehan. And Sheehan will give to... Madison, Madison to Frazier. Frazier all the way down into the right wing corner. Plays it back up the line intended, or up to the line intended for Manis. Broken up by Ford. And Ford will work his way down the left wing side all the way into the weak zone. Takes it behind the net. Throws the puck towards the front, but it's knocked away by Campbell. Now to the line, McKinnon. He'll play it far side for Murphy. Murphy down into the corner for Ford. Ford skates it back up the wall. Now plays it back to the line again. McKinnon right from the top of the blue line. Fires a shot. It goes off of Campbell. And Campbell ended up redirecting it just wide of the post, near side as we were looking at it. And Colby Brown going one way, and then after the deflection off of Campbell, had to uh, hope. And fortunately for him, the trajectory did take the puck wide of the net. Now here's Dawson with it, coming in, working against Manis. Manis able to knock the puck off his stick. Ben Pearl coming the other way. Pearl coming in one on two. And Noah Tanner able to create the turnover. Tanner tried to play the puck off the wall, but there was Jacob Campbell. Campbell now trying to get it to Sutherland. Ryland Sutherland back to Campbell. Campbell had it in his feet, was able to kick the puck up to his stick and then fire a shot just wide of the net. Great job by Campbell to make something out of what looked like it was going to be nothing. And now the Weeks come back the other way. There's Sutherland with a shot. And Jonathan Coombs makes the save and hangs on. With 5.44 gone here in the second period, still the 2-0 scoreline between the Weeks and the Sydney Mitsubishi Rush. Still looking for the first goal of the game between the Dartmouth Steel Subaru and the Cape Breton West Islanders. I believe they're into the first intermission there now. 
Puck flipped back into the zone after it had just cleared the blue line. Ford. Or, sorry, that was Billard who got it to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald's pass misses the intended target of Seymour. With it now is Duncan. Duncan lead pass for Vora. Vora will send the puck down into the corner, going after it, Sutherland. Chopping it ahead there was Cole Murphy. And the rush get the puck down the ice. Merriweather going back to get it. He'll reach it before it reaches the goal line. Battle in the corner. Puck is poked to the far side. Duncan able to pick up there. He'll reverse it back to Merriweather. Merriweather with a little bit of space. He'll start moving forward. Plays the puck off the wall out to center. Jordan gets a piece of it. And McKinnon has to go all the way back deep into his own. Battling or working against Vora. Vora able to get onto the puck. But he when he poked it up the wall, Gould was the only one there for Sydney. Now the Weeks bring it right back into the zone. Madison has the puck knocked off his stick. And gathering it in is Cohen Tanner. He'll play it over to McDonald. McDonald in across the line to Gould at the front of the net. Gould with a chance. And Colby Brown able to stay with him and get the pad out. Another shot, another save made by Brown. As Colby Brown has been absolutely spectacular here. A couple of very difficult saves. Meanwhile, away from the puck, Ingram got absolutely upended by Gould. No call. As play continues on now, Gould knee to knee contact on Madison. That's going to draw a penalty. And they are going to call that kneeing. And Sam Madison, in a lot of discomfort, heading right to the bench. With 12.34 left to go in the period. And that is going to be a kneeing penalty, which is an automatic double minor. And Mitchell Gould, after dumping Ingram in front of the net and not getting caught on that one, does get caught on the knee-to-knee hit on Sam Madison. And I think Madison has actually gone to the dressing room. I don't see him down at the bench right now. Well, keep an eye on that, as that could be a significant moment for the week's majors if they lose Sam Madison for any length of time Madison not huge on the stat sheet with 9 points in 21 games but Sam Madison really exemplifies the hard work and the lunch pail ethic of this week's majors team 48 seconds gone in the power play. Jordan gets the puck across to Croft. Croft sends it towards the net. That'll be cleared away from the front by Murphy. Now here's Matheson with it. Matheson gets a step coming in. Matheson shorthanded. What a save! Colby Brown. And now we're going to get another penalty. And it's going to be Matheson for cross-checking. So the Weeks will have a full two minutes of four, five on three. But what a save by Colby Brown. That was absolutely phenomenal. And I know I've used that word a few times. But sometimes it's the only word that fits. And holy cow, that was a great save. And the Weeks have used their time out here as they have a five minute, or a two minute, sorry, five on three. 2.48 left to go in the double minor taken by Gould. And the full two minutes on the clock for the cross checking penalty taken by Brady Matheson. So. Head coach Kyle McLennan wanting a, to draw something up there for Sears, Jordan, Sutherland, Merriweather, and Vora. Still don't see Sam Madison on the bench, or is that him? No, Sam Madison has returned to the bench, so that's good news. 11.22 left to go here in the period. Here's Sears with the puck. Sears plays it to Merriweather. Merriweather over to Pearl. Pearl sends it down low for Sutherland. Sutherland behind the net. 
Sears right in front. Played over to Vora. Vora gives to Merriweather. Merriweather down into the corner for Jordan. Jordan right back to Merriweather, but that pass goes through him and out to center ice. 130 left to go in the five on three. Merriweather back to pick up. He'll carry through center as the Rush have all three of their defenders just waiting at the blue line. Now Jordan gives it back to Vora. Vora steps to the middle, takes a shot, save made. Puck is still loose. And now it's underneath. Co- no, it's not. It's still loose. I thought Coombs had it. Now they blow it down. One oh eight left in the five on three. One fifty six left in the double minor for uh, Mitchell Gould, and ten thirty left in the second period. With the weeks leading it here two to nothing. <laughs> and this sequence has the potential to be a huge swing moment in this game, one way or the other. Either the weeks with a huge chance to extend this lead or the rush with a chance to build some huge momentum if they're able to get all of these penalties killed off. Here's Vora with the puck. Plays it back to Ingram. Ingram stepping in. Down to Sutherland. Across for Jordan. Jordan lost control of the puck. Now the net comes loose. We'll get a stoppage. As the net behind Jonathan Coombs got dislodged. 48 seconds now left in the five on three, a minute 36 remaining in the double liner. So we're into the second half of that double minor. The kneeing penalty taken by Mitchell Gould. Sam Madison seated at the bench. He's the one of few players for the weeks who is sitting down right now. We'll keep an eye on him, see if he gets back out onto the ice. Here's Ingram now with the puck. Ingram skates it to the middle, plays it over to Vora, top of the face-off circle, back to Ingram again. Ingram to the Vora down at the bottom of the face-off circle. Back to Ingram again. Ingram to Jordan, one-timer, big save made by Coombs. Rebound cleared from the front of the net by McIsaac, but the Crushers right, or the Weeks, excuse me, right back on it. There's Jordan with the puck. Now it comes to Coombs, and he'll cover up and hang on for a face-off. And with 11 seconds left in the five-on-three, Sam Madison back out onto the ice. That is very good news for him. He comes out with Croft. Jordan stays out there. And the Weeks put a coin and Manis out as the defensive pair. Draw one right to a coin. A coin waits, gets the puck right on to Brady Croft's stick. What a beautiful pass by Ryan o- or by uh, Ryan O'Coin with seven seconds left in the five on three. The Weeks extend the lead. A beautiful play by O'Coin. Brady Croft gets his third point of the game. His third goal and 10th point of the season. But give the credit on that one to Ryan O'Coin for a beautiful pass right onto the stick of Brady Croft. Croft, give him credit as well. He was in perfect position and had the stick right in the right place. But Brady, but uh, Ryan O'Coin, one of the nicest assists you'll see him get. And Fitzgerald gets the puck across and Seymour just can't find the blade of the stick touching the puck. As we get confirmation of Croft's goal. And Sam Madison, who won the draw, gets the second assist as expected. So it is Croft, his third goal and 10th point of the season. Third point of the game after assisting on the first two goals. Ryan O'Coin and Sam Madison with the assists on the power play goal at 10-31. Second power play goal of the game for the Weeks. Now we're back to five on five as the puck comes to uh, to, uh, uh, Gould. Gould with the shot. That goes off the outside of the net. Now Cohen Tanner plays it across. For Murphy, Murphy will send the puck down low. Manis goes behind the net to get it. Rush making changes. That allows Manis to play the puck ahead, but Croft not able to get a stick on it, so that's going to be an icing call against the Weeks. 8-11 remaining here in the second period. Now a 3-0 scoreline for the hometown Weeks Majors against the visiting 
Sydney Mitsubishi Rush. Noah Tanner with the puck. Gets away from Croft. Steps in. Gets a shot away. Brown the save. Puck may have been going wide anyway. Now Dawson. Has it knocked away from him by Manis. It'll be picked up by Vora. Vora tries to send it around uh, Cohen Tanner, but it ends up hitting the lines person. And the Weeks have to take it all the way back deep into their own zone. Madison kicks the puck ahead. Croft able to get to it. Gets it back to Madison, but Madison loses it to Ford. Ford can't get a shot away. Takes it down into the corner. Throws it to the front of the net. It gets beyond Gould and then also beyond Cohen Tanner and out to center ice. 7.34 left to go here, second period. Lead pass. Ford deflects the puck forward. Dawson going in after it. He'll get to the puck in the corner. Manis gives him a bump into the end boards. Now played back to the line. Noah Tanner, his shot, blocked, partially blocked by Sutherland, goes into the end wall. Manis will play it around. Vora gets it ahead, and here comes Sears. Sears getting a step on Cohen Tanner. Has Sutherland heading towards the net. Sears with a shot, and the save made by Coombs. Following up, Merriweather plays it down into the corner for Sears. Sears tried to get a pass into the middle of the ice. It was knocked down, and now here's Ford with the puck. He'll get it ahead to Dawson. Dawson across the line, back to Ford. Ford gets stood up there, but still with the puck. There's Gould with a chance, and a kick save made by Colby Brown. Now here's Vora coming the other way. Has the puck knocked off his stick. Merriweather able to follow up and get the puck. Now he'll give to McKenzie. Back to, to Ingram. Ingram was in no position to take the pass cleanly, though. And coming the other way, now here's McDonald working down the right wing side. McDonald gives to Marshall. Marshall with a shot. That goes wide. May have gone off the tip of the glove. Of Colby Brown. Vora can't take the pass cleanly. McDonald back on it for the rush. McDonald stepping in. Gets it to Marshall. There's another shot. Save. Rebound. Puck to loose. Still loose. They jam away at it. And finally it's blown down as Colby Brown has possession and hangs on for a faceoff with 6.17 left to go here in the second period. As just taking a quick look here, seeing if anybody has had anything to say nothing showing up on social media at the moment so Robitaille in to take this face off against Jacob Campbell Robitaille wins it back to Murphy Murphy plays it to Matheson Matheson sends it down to Robitaille Robitaille into the corner for O'Neill. O'Neill lets it go all the way through to the far side McKenzie's the first one there Manis trying to clear it Ro Robitaille knocks that down Robitaille to O'Neill behind the net. O'Neill will ring it around the boards. Murphy has that one hot past him, and Murphy able or has to chase it down deep into his own zone. Plays it across there for Noah Tanner. Played ahead to O'Neill. O'Neill lead pass for Matheson. Matheson deflects it the rest of the way down the ice. Brown out of his net to play it. He'll give it to Sheehan. Sheehan with a quick pass over to Manis. Ben Manis tries to clear. That's knocked down by O'Neill. Now Matheson chases it down on the left wing boards. Sends it behind the net to Robitaille. Robitaille has Manis all over him. Manis will get the puck over to the right wing wall as you're looking at it from a rush perspective. Seth McKenzie bringing it out to center ice. Now here's Tanner with it. That being Cohen Tanner. His pass intended for Matheson. Uh, Campbell got just a piece of that. Now Cohen Tanner back on it. Taking it back into his own zone. Plays it ahead for Robitaille. Robitaille gets it across to Matheson. Matheson's pass intended for O'Neill. Ends up on the stick of Robitaille instead. He plays it back to Cohen Tanner. Tanner working against Croft. Croft able to knock him off the puck. Now Tanner back on it again. Gives to Robitaille. Right back to Tanner. Now Seymour with a shot. And a save made by Colby Brown. For Brown, that save number 18 on the afternoon. Yeah. more As just pointed out by my cameraman, Steven. More than yesterday's total. As the Rush have played, the Rush have played a very good second period. Let's not kid ourselves here. Out of this whole weekend series between these two teams, this second period might be the best period the Rush have played so far. Unfortunately for them, they're running into a goaltender who's seeing every puck the size of a beach ball, to use that uh, old uh, cliched uh, analogy. And that's the way it's going to be sometimes. And that seems to be the way it's been for the Rush this year. They run into goalies who are hot. They have bounces not go their way. They just have had bad luck after bad luck. And you talk about things like, uh, you know, a, a, one of your best players being out with a broken leg and has yet to play a game this season because he's out with a broken leg, you know. 
And this isn't like the 1960s anymore when you got, uh, you know, guys like Willis Reed who can come out of the New York Knicks locker room on a broken leg. You know, players, players, doctors, everybody understands the importance of uh, proper recovery from injuries to prevent long-term damage, especially when you're talking about a youth. You know, there's a big difference between Willis Reed, who was getting paid good money to play basketball on a broken leg, versus, or, you know, to stick with hockey, um, Bobby Bond. And again, I know we're talking way, way back. Uh, I'm not quite old enough to remember those. I just remember hearing stories about those incidents. Although Reed might have been in the 70s now that I think about it. Anyway, but I digress. I know me digressing is such a uh, rare thing to happen during a broadcast. (laughs) Uh, Puck gets the line. Marshall holds it in. Now, here comes Madison. But Madison slowed up a little bit there by McIsaac and Marshall. And that allows... Noah Tanner to start bringing the puck up the other way. Noah Tanner all the way down the left wing. Takes it down into the corner. Throws the puck to the front of the net. Goes all the way to the far boards. Billard chases it down there. Plays it into the corner to uh, McDonald. McDonald takes it all the way to the top of the zone. Tries to set it up for uh, McKinnon. McKinnon sends it down into the corner. And now the Weeks. Ingram able to create the turnover. Ingram... Gives the puck to McKenzie, and McKenzie will just get the puck the rest of the way down the ice, and he'll head off for a much-needed change. As the Weeks get four out of the five players changed up, the only one who was not able to get off the ice there was Josh Ingram. Speaking of Ingram, there he is with the puck. He'll play it off the boards. This time, he actually, he might not be able to make a change as Cohen Tanner was able to knock that puck down. 2.24 left to go here in the period. Merriweather plays it ahead. Now Sears with it. He has that roll off of his stick. Ford able to pick it up in neutral ice. It's knocked off his stick by Sears, but Dawson gets it. He'll dump it down, and we're going to get a penalty against the Weeks, and I believe it's going to be Kieran Sears going off for tripping with 2.10 remaining here in the second period, so the Weeks majors will be shorthanded for just the second time in this game. Weeks have scored twice on the power play out of a total of five chances. There were four penalties, but one of them was a double minor, so it does count as two power play opportunities. So they are two for five out of their three goals scored. And the rush, 0 for 1 so far. And the second penalty, second power play, not a great start as they lose the draw and have to come all the way back 200 feet. Here's McDonald with it. He plays it to O'Neill. O'Neill gives to Seymour. Seymour goes far side with it for McKenzie. Now to Tanner, to Seymour, to, Mc- to, McKen- or to Fitzgerald, rather. That was not McKenzie, that was Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald plays it down low. Pass for O'Neill. O'Neill, a right-handed shot. If he was a lefty, that puck would have been right on his blade, but was on the wrong side of him. So the rush have to go all the way back. 122 left to go in the period in the penalty. Ten seconds the differential on the penalty and the period. There will be ten seconds left in the period when the penalty comes to an end. Noah Tanner dumps the puck down into the weak zone. Brown out of his net. Plays it to Manis in the near side corner. Manis can't get it past Seymour. Seymour knocks that puck down. Here comes Tyler Seymour. His shot blocked by Manis. Goes into the far corner to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald has it knocked off his stick. And Ryan Vora able to clear it down the ice. Under a minute left to go in the period. And as mentioned, the penalty will end 10 seconds before the period does. Play it ahead to McDonald. McDonald carries across the line, left wing side, gives to O'Neill. O'Neill far side. There's a shot for Fitzgerald and another brilliant save by Colby Brown. And if I'm Colby Brown right now, (laughs) Colby Brown... In his mind right now, he's going, you can shoot from anywhere. He is seeing that puck incredibly well. There's a pass for Gould and another great save by Brown. Robitaille plays it down the wall. Back up to Robitaille. I know Brown... 
I, I, I'm trying to think of where Brown's uh, Junior A and Major Junior rights are held. Bathurst for Major Junior. Junior A, I want to say his rights are held. Uh, I want to say Amherst for some reason. But whoever it is, the Titan right now have to be look. If anyone from the Titan is watching this game right now, they have to be thrilled with the fact that this guy is on their uh, future list. And Colby Brown with 20 saves through the first two periods, he is having an incredible, incredible game. Second period comes to an end. The rush, we talked about how good they played this second period. They outshot the Weeks 13-5 to in period number two. Unfortunately for them, the only goal of the period came on a power play marker by Brady Croft to extend the Weeks lead to 3-0. Croft with the deflection on the, on the uh, or the redirection of the pass by Ryan O'Coin after the faceoff was won by Sam Madison right off of the draw. And so the Weeks will carry a 3-0 lead into the third period. Shots overall are 20-15 for the rush. After out shooting the Weeks 13-5 in that period, we're going to take a break. We'll come back, get you ready for the third period in just a few minutes. You are watching Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League action here on Petter Sports and Streaming through Atlantic Hockey Online, a division of AO Live.
Welcome back as we get ready for the third period. Weeks lead the rush 3 nothing going into the third. But the rush, as we mentioned a couple times in that second period, I, I don't think it's even questionable that that second period was their best period of this weekend. And, and Stephen made the comment while we were uh, off air If they keep playing like they played that second period, the wins are going to start coming for this team. They can't play hockey that well and not start getting some breaks, not start getting things going their way. Unfortunately for them, today they've run into a goaltender who is absolutely, uh, to use the Spanish phrase, El Fuego. He is not Colby Brown. He is Colby El Fuego today as he has just been playing phenomenal net for the weeks. And and uh, right off of the draw, here's a chance for the made week's major. Sutherland with a shot. And Jonathan Coombs, who's played a great game himself. Coombs has been very steady in the in the rush net. You look at the, the three goals that, uh, that he's given up. Two of them are power play goals. You know... There's a reason players don't get minuses on their plus-minus stats when power play goals are scored because you have to kind of uh, almost not expect, but you have to account for the fact that power play goals, there's less of a chance to stop those from happening. And then the one other goal uh, for Ben Pearl, Coombs tried to get back to the right spot in his crease, just missed it by 8 to 10 inches backing up from the face-off dot to try to get into the right spot. And that's such a difficult skill for a goaltender. Coombs has played very good hockey today. But at the other end, Colby Brown, like I say, he's just been absolutely on fire. And, and that's the that that in its in and of itself is how this rush season has gone. They're not getting breaks. They're not getting luck. They've got one of their top, a guy who would be one of their top players if he was in the lineup, has yet to see the ice this season after breaking his leg at Q camp. You know, it's, you can't help but feel for them. And... I've always had the utmost respect for this Sydney Mitsubishi Rush organization, and you can't help but wish for them that, you know, they they would get a few breaks to go their way, but it just has not been the case yet this weekend. It hasn't been the case really this whole season for them. The breaks just have not been theirs to get. As Frazier dumps the puck down into the corner, we've passed two minutes gone here in the third period. Final regular season game prior to Christmas for both of these teams. They will meet on the day before New Year's Eve for their final regular season meeting and their final game of 2023. It'll be their final meeting against each other for 2023. It'll be their final meeting for 23-24 unless they come into each other in the playoffs. Puck comes up the wall to McDonald. He'll play it ahead. And Basque Christmas got a stick on the puck there. We've hardly seen him on the ice today. That's another thing for the Sydney Mitsubishi Rush. Nicholas Basque Christmas has barely been out there. So one of their hardest working defensemen has hardly seen the ice today, so he's obviously playing a little bit hurt. Because, I, I, yeah, that's the first time I've called his name all day. Tanner, Tanner, McKinnon, and, and, uh, and Murphy have carried the huge portion of the load on the back end. Or sorry, Tanner, Tanner, Murphy, McKinnon, and McIsaac have carried the the majority of the load. 
Here's Manis. He plays the puck off the wall. Cream gets it there. He'll send it down into the rush zone. Back to get it. And we're going to get another penalty against the rush. Interference for Noah Tanner as he knocked down uh, Keenan Cream well away from the play. So the Weeks will go to their sixth power play of the afternoon. And is coming with just under four minutes gone in the third period. And, or sorry, that's that's Keegan O'Neill, not Tanner. Uh, my apologies. Or no, that is uh, Noah Tanner who got that interference call. They put seven up on the board, but it was 77, not seven. Yeah. As Billy was announcing it, he announced it as Keegan O'Neill's penalty as well. And I was I was starting to type to send a message down to Billy going, no, 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 that's 77. But uh, Noah, Noah Tanner in the box turned and showed him his number and said, no, no, no. So good on Noah Tanner to take those two penalty minutes onto his own stats when he could have handed them off to a teammate. Although I'm sure Keegan O'Neill would have... Uh, would have uh, at some point gone and said, hey, those are not my penalty minutes. I don't want them on my stats. There's Merriweather with a shot. Another nice save made by Coombs. And again, Coombs, we talked about it earlier. Coombs has played very well today. Two power play goals against and one goal that, uh, you know, you know that Coombs is going to be working on that skill over his next few practices of coming out, playing a puck, and backing into his crease to find the right spot after giving up a goal on in that fashion earlier t in the uh, game today. The goal that made it one nothing back in the first period. Here's Ingram. He'll play it over to Merriweather. Merriweather with a shot. And another one steered aside by Coombs. Merriweather. There's a sh uh, deflection by Sutherland that didn't miss by a whole bunch. Now Sutherland with the puck again. Plays it over to Merriweather. There's a shot blocker save made by Coombs. Merriweather maybe didn't get quite as much on that shot as he would have liked. Ten seconds left in the power play. Ingram with the puck. Ingram steps up, takes it to the half wall, now backs up again, plays it to O'Coin on the far side. O'Coin with a shot. That's deflected into the end glass. Penalty to Noah Tanner comes to an end. Billard tried to spring Tanner after he came out of the box, but the pass was intercepted, and now the rush have to come back out. McIsaac will play the puck ahead. That ends up hopping over the stick of Robitaille. And Ben Manis with it. He plays it up the wall. Robitaille intercepts. There's a shot. Save. And the rebound cleared away by O'Coin. Sometimes to be a good goalie, you need help from your defenseman. Ryan O'Coin with a big play there to clear that one away from danger. And now Dawson brings the puck in. But the rush will be offside on that play with 632 gone here in the third period. Looking to see, <coughs> again, if there are any comments or anything on the online postings. Doesn't look like there are. Here's uh, Frazier with the puck. He takes a hit from Marshall there. Now Bass Cr Christmas. Again, good to see him back out there. Like I said, I, he didn't take a lot of shifts in the first two periods, but he's out there for... I think this is only his second shift of the period and possibly his second shift of the game as well. Bass Christmas on the puck again. He'll play it over to Murphy. Murphy returns it to Nicholas Bass Christmas. Played ahead to Dawson. Dawson has that puck get away from him, though, and O'Coin will give it to Stoddart. Jackson Stoddart working his way ahead. In across the line, feeds it over to Jacob Campbell. Campbell tries to send it down low. Matt Bass Christmas gets to that puck. He'll play it out to center ice. O'Coin sends it right back the other way. Stoddart gets a piece of that puck to make sure it's not an icing. And Bass Christmas back to get it behind his own net. Trying to get away from the pressure of Keenan Cream. Plays it ahead for Seymour. Seymour has that hop over his stick. Down the ice it goes, and that's going to be an icing call against Sydney with 12-13 remaining here in the third period. <coughs> 
Pearl with Croft and Cream, Ingram and Sheehan. Fast Christmas out there on the defensive side with Noah Tanner, Gould Seymour, and Ford. The forwards on the ice at the moment for the rush, but Bass Christmas comes off as they get the puck down the ice. And McKinnon goes on as the second defenseman. Puck comes to McKinnon. He'll fire a shot from the point. Colby Brown slides across and gloves that one down. Makes his 21st save on 21 shots here this afternoon. Just the first save he's had to make in this third period. Although the Weeks have only gotten two shots down at the other end. The play being kept very much to the outside here through the first eight minutes and 13 seconds of this third period. Rush win the draw, but it comes all the way out to center ice. Ryan Vora able to get possession. Sutherland had to slow up to try and make sure that his back foot stayed on side so he wasn't in position to take that pass. And the Rush get possession and out to center it comes. Merriweather. Leaves the puck there for Ryland Sutherland. Sutherland has Vora heading to the net. Sutherland to Vora. Vora puts it just wide. Coombs was there. If that shot had been on target, Coombs made a great play getting across. Ryan Vora had to put it wide of the net or ended up putting it wide of the net as he tried to get it around Coombs. Now Vora with another shot, and Coombs makes the kick save on that one. Sutherland to Sears out front, and it gets through, and they score. Kieran Sears takes the pass from Ryland Sutherland. And it's now 4-0 for the Weeks. For Kieran Sears, his 10th goal of the season. Sears hits the double digits. His 14th point of the year. Ryland Sutherland will certainly get the first assist. That brings him to double digits in helpers. I think there will be a second assist to Vora maybe we'll wait and get confirmation of that here in a moment Seth McKenzie waited too long for the puck to come to him Ryan Vora does indeed get the second assist on that goal So again, Kieran Sears, his 10th goal, 14th point of the season, assisted by Ryland Sutherland and Ryan Vora at 8.58 of the third period. It's now 4-0 weeks with now 9.32 gone here in the third. Looking ahead on Petter Sports and Streaming, we've got one game left in 2023 it'll be this coming friday when the uh, u16 AAA fundy thunder play at home friday the 22nd uh trying to rem- go from memory as to who they're hosting and exactly what time that night just give me a second here to pull that up it'll be an eight o'clock start from here at the Uh, Pictou County Wellness Center when they host the Basin Armada. And we will have that game for you here on Petter Sports and Streaming. And again, that will be our last game of 2023 on Petter Sports and Streaming. Our next week's majors broadcast will be Friday, January 5th, when the Weeks host the Valley Wildcats. That's a 7 o'clock start that night. As... 2023 gets close to drawing to a close here. As that puck ends up going up over the glass now to play, we'll get a stoppage. 9.36 left to go. After a 5-0 victory yesterday, the Weeks with a 4-0 lead here with 9.36 left to go. And... Frazier knocks that puck down, ended up gloving it to himself, so play able to go on. Frazier now pokes the puck down towards the corner. McKinnon able to get it. He plays it up the wall. Ingram stepped up, way up from his point position, 
all the way down into the corner now. Gives it to Pearl behind the net. Pearl ends up having the puck taken from him by Dawson. And Noah Tanner will take it back behind his net. Now he'll stop. Bring it up to Gould near side. Gould off the boards, out to center. Stoddart knocks it back in, but Noah Tanner able to get possession. He'll carry it out, come through center. Tanner still with it, fires a shot! And the save made by Brown. And the rebound control by Colby Brown there kicked the puck to where there was nobody in gold ready to get onto that puck. Sometimes rebound control means you keep that puck right in front of you so that nobody else can get it and you can smother it. Sometimes rebound control means you kick that puck to empty space where nobody can get it. Colby Brown showed a prime example of that second type of rebound control on that last play. Beautifully done. Beautifully executed by the week's goaltender. Not only is he dialed in on seeing the puck, he's dialed in on all of the fundamentals right now in that week's net. As the puck comes into the near side corner, 8.15 left to go here, third period. Croft has it knocked off his stick. It comes to the line. Sheehan with a shot. He puts that off the outside of the net. Croft back on it. It ends up coming back to Sheehan at the line. He plays it over to the far side. First one over there will be Murphy. He gets it ahead for Ford. Ford to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald finds Seymour. Seymour with a shot. And suddenly Seymour with the goal. Top corner over Colby Brown. As great as Brown played over this weekend, I don't think any goalie in this league is stopping that shot. Tyler Seymour with a laser beam just inside the top corner. And Tyler Seymour, his 10th goal, 26th point of the season, leads the team in points, second on the team in goals behind Malcolm McDonald. And... Braylon Fitzgerald and Brody Ford with the assist. So that goal, once again, Tyler Seymour's 10th goal, 26th point of the season, assisted by Braylon Fitzgerald and Brody Ford at 12.02 of the third period, makes it a 4-1 scoreline in favor of the Weeks and takes away one bit of suspense in this game, which was whether the Weeks would go through the entire weekend without giving up a goal. whether Colby Brown would be able to earn back-to-back shutout victories. Still up for debate is whether Brown will get back-to-back victories because this game is not over yet. But it is a big hill to climb still for the Sydney Mitsubishi rush. McKenzie in across the blue line. Almost as big as the hill on Mount Smoky as you come into Inganish Beach. Or first you come into Inganish and then you head on to Inganish Beach. Sorry, I got my uh, Cabot Trail geography messed up there. There's a chance for Fitzgerald, and he was able to beat Brown, but Brown getting help from the iron, much like Coombs did on one earlier this period. And now Jordan come the other way, and that might just do it for the weeks as Chris Jordan gets his second of the game. And regains the four-goal margin for the week's majors. And as is so often the case, you get a great scoring chance at one end that doesn't go in, this time because of a iron post instead of a goaltender save, and then coming the other way, you get the goal... Madison with his second assist of the game, and it's the only assist on that one. So Chris Jordan, his second goal of the game, 13th goal of the season, 
assisted by Sam Madison at 1357 to put the Weeks out in front 5-1 to one now. And we're going to get a penalty against Ben Manis as he took Marshall down. Tripping is the indication. And so a third power play for Sydney coming with just under five and a half minutes left to go in the third period. And four goals in five and a half minutes. Certainly not impossible, but difficult. But if they can score quickly with the man advantage here, there's a big kick save by Brown. And he, again, kicked it right to Ryan Vora. Vora not able to clear the zone, however. Now McDonald behind the net. Malcolm McDonald plays it around to Fitzgerald near side. Fitzgerald back to the line for Noah Tanner. He'll fire a shot. McDonald not able to get a stick on it for a deflection. Puck comes off the boards to Seymour to Tanner. Noah Tanner back to Seymour. He has the, the rush goal. His shot blocked that time by Ingram. And now McDonald sends it around behind the net or along the wall to Fitzgerald up at the point. Fitzgerald skates it down to McDonald to O'Neill. O'Neill's shot goes wide. 115 left to go in the power play. Fitzgerald across to Tanner, down to Seymour. Seymour towards the front of the net. Ingram kicks that away. It comes right back to the stick of Seymour to Fitzgerald. His shot blocked by Sears. And gathering it in is Jackson Stoddard, and he launches it down the ice halfway through this penalty. Long lead pass to Keegan O'Neill. O'Neill in across the blue line. Avoids a hit. Throws it across to Seymour. Back to the line. Murphy back down to Seymour. Seymour's across, pass across for Fitzgerald. Goes off the skate of Chris Jordan. Now Fitzgerald coming back the other way. Fitzgerald down into the corner. Takes it behind the net. Out for Ford. Ford with a shot. Brown the save. Puck comes to Seymour at the wall. Or Seymour goes to the puck at the wall. Gives to Murphy. Fitzgerald back to Seymour. Seymour trying to get away from Jordan. Plays the puck back. Ford now to Seymour again. Seven seconds left in the power play. Across for Ford. But it went off of his foot instead of his skate blade. Or stick blade rather. And down the ice it is sent as we're back to five on five. Under three and a half to go, third period. Weeks lead it 5-1. Cole Murphy carries across the line, takes the puck down towards the corner. Has it knocked off his stick by Ingram. And the Weeks get the puck out. Down the ice it'll go. That'll be an icing call. And we'll get a stoppage with 3.08 remaining. As the Weeks look to pick up their eighth victory of the season. And try and put a little bit of space between themselves and the Islanders and the Rush in that battle between 6th, 7th, and 8th in the 8-team Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League. Another icing call. Chips away a few more seconds off of the clock. And I'm sure the weeks right now will gladly take 5, 10, 15 seconds off at a time as they are under three minutes away from earning that eighth victory of the year. The rush that far from falling to 6-18-2 on the season. Puck is brought out to center. Here's Croft with it. He's got Cream heading towards the net. Croft with a shot. It goes off of uh, McIsaac. Now Croft back on it again. Working along the wall. Takes a bump from Matheson, but gets the puck to Cream. Cream with a shot. That's kicked aside by Coombs. Pearl gets it to Croft. Croft with some space. Croft comes to the middle, gets a shot off. And Coombs steers that one to the far corner. Pearl on it again. Tries to make a pass for Frazier, but Matheson was there to intercept. Now here's Basque Christmas in across the line. Basque Christmas tried to make a pass. That gets turned over. Here's a race for the puck. Frazier against Matheson. Frazier, but Matheson able to tie up Frazier's stick enough and then play the puck clear and get it over to Brody Ford. Ford coming the other way. Under two minutes left. Here's Ford down to the corner. Take it behind the net. Ford into the near corner now. Plays the puck off to Dawson. Dawson with the... Lost it to um, Xander Billard and Billard with a backhand shot. And Colby Brown 
who has made 28 saves on 29 shots this afternoon. Smothers the puck for a faceoff with 107 seconds, separating his team from their eighth win of the regular season. Off of the faceoff, Campbell plays the puck ahead. That'll be a little too far. That'll be an icing. 139 left. As we mentioned, our next broadcast will be Friday night. 8 o'clock puck drop in that game between the Fundy Thunder and Basin Armada. I believe that game is scheduled to be on the other sheet of ice here at the Wellness Center. That may end up changing. We'll double check on that. But either way, whether it's on the sheet of ice that's right behind us or whether it's here on this one, we will have it for you here on Petter Sports and Streaming next Friday night, 8 o'clock puck drop. Note the start time. It's a bit of a later start, 8 o'clock. With now 1.15 left to go. And I believe for the weeks and the rush for both of them, their next game will be the next game against each other. Let me just double check that and make sure. No, the rush will have one more or two more games before Christmas. Next weekend on the 20th and 21st, they will be hosting the Valley Wildcats. And then on the 28th, they'll have a game at the Islanders before the week's visit on the 30th. So really no big long no big break here this season in the Nova Scotia Under-18 Major Hockey League. For the weeks, they'll be on the road next weekend at Halifax on Sunday. They won't have a Saturday game, but they'll play at Halifax on Sunday the 22nd, and then they'll play at the Rush on the 30th. As we're into the final minute here, Vora with the puck below the goal line, takes it out, plays it back to Duncan. Duncan across to O'Coin. O'Coin with a shot. Save. Rebound. Vora with a shot. That can't get through all of the bodies in front of the net. And now McDonald comes out with it. Malcolm McDonald gives to O'Neill. O'Neill tried to get it back to McDonald, but that kicked away. Now Cohen Tanner can't get a shot off. As he fanned on the puck, 22 seconds left to go. Puck just played out to center. Murphy will back up with it. 16 seconds left. Murphy gets it ahead to Marshall. Marshall ends up running in to Duncan, and Marshall gets the better of that exchange, then gets the puck to O'Neill. O'Neill with the shot. That goes off the end boards as it went just a little bit high. Marshall now trying to tuck it in, and that will do it. And then Colby Brown takes a shot at Marshall after the horn sounds. And cooler heads will quickly prevail as the weeks wrap up their home schedule for 2023 with a 5-1 victory this afternoon over the Sydney Mitsubishi Rush. Shots on goal in the third period, 11 by the Rush for a three-period total of 31, eight by the Weeks for a three-period total of 23. That's going to do it for us here this afternoon from the Pictou County Wellness Center until Friday when we're back here to bring you the Fundy Thunder and Basin Armada of the Nova Scotia Under-16 AAA Hockey League on behalf of my awesome cameraman Stephen McPhee. This is Michael Petter saying may your skates always be sharp. May your shots always hit the top shelf. Thanks so much for watching. Your final score once again, the Weeks. Finish off the home schedule for 2023 with a victory 5-1 over the visiting Sydney Mitsubishi Rush. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon.